I travel the world looking for understanding of the times that we live in, hunting and gathering first-hand information, challenging definitions of sin. I travel the world looking for lovers of the ultimate beauty, but never. Welcome, everybody. Today, we're bringing everyone to the fireworks. We're bringing the whole party. Let's fucking do it. I thought about who I should bring to the show this time. Thinking about it set off a vivid image in my mind of the fireworks I had seen before, exploding in patterns and illuminating the night sky. Suddenly, memories of my many attempts burst forth like the fireworks themselves. All the different things that had happened, the people I met, and also my many confrontations with Reza. I remembered everything. Finally. Now they're just wondering, like, why are we here? I'm not sure what I'm to say. I'm not sure what to say to this. Well, the science behind time traveling is actually sound and doesn't contradict anything we know with contradict anything we know about the portal. Can't say the same about the theory with the wormholes and barriers, though. It does confirm what my roommate has been learning. And my own experience, I can't believe all this happened to you, Frieza. Freya? You called yourself Frieza? I called myself Frieza. <laughs> with all the power I possess right now, I might as well be. You're looking at the Frieza Force. To, to be honest, let's be honest, if I had an army, this would be it. The proof speaks for itself, really. The proof speaks for itself, really. I'm not so sure about this. It all just sounds so... I know, Bryce, time traveling is only something that happens in bad science fiction novels, right? Hmm. Huh. And I thought this was going to be some sort of intervention... I've already given you proof regarding the time travel. You don't just have to believe me about the rest, though. All of you have evaded peril because of this phenomenon. Think of, the, think of times when you were suddenly changed your mind because of what you thought might happen. If you had memories of things that, ever, that never happened or dreams that later turned out to be true, you have experienced it as well. Some of those nightmares, yeah, those have happened too. Are you saying that if I had flown during the competition, I would have died? I remember things from the timelines where I died. Same must be true for all of you. It's not just your imagination. This is nice and all, but why did you call all us here? I mean, what's the point of telling us all this? I know where Reza is going to be in a few hours. The five of you are the people I've gotten to know best in the time I spent here. Maybe you can even remember some of the things we've done together in other timelines. Now I need your help to stop him. Why don't you just call the police about this? You wouldn't even need to tell them about all the time traveling and such. This case was already getting too big for us, and we still haven't got the reinforcements we requested from the city. With the fireworks going on tonight, we really wouldn't have anyone to spare. You want us to stop him? That sounds dangerous. He's killed at least four people so far, right? And let's not forget that he still has his weapon. What's in it for me? Having a part in stopping a murderer who would probably get you a, would probably get you a civil honor. Wouldn't exactly look great on us to give someone a medal and throw them in the prison the next day, just saying. Knowing Amara, she'd probably make a big parade out of it and have her part. And I and I, she'd probably make a big parade out of it and have her pardoned. Sounds like a deal to me. Yeah, sounds like a deal to me. Of course, you'd only so help for your own good. At least I consider my options instead of following someone blindly. Faria tells you to fly, and you only ask how high. Freya has called us here to stop Reza. If we want to make this happen, we should probably start making a plan. Agreed. Same here. So, so where is he going to be? 
In the underground building near the portal, he'll try to steal its generator. I see. Previously, I only realized where he was once he was already inside, but this time we can think about the best way to stop him. We're just gonna storm the place, I should probably go first. For one, I'm a professional. What's more, I'm also an earth dragon. That's what makes me a good cop. Virtually unkillable by any wound would-be criminals. I wouldn't be so sure of that. What's that What's supposed that to mean? To mean? Well, all of us together should have no trouble taking him down. I don't want to kill him if I don't have to. Yeah, as the chief, I agree. Even if we outnumber him, let's not forget about his weapon. Our first goal should be to disarm him somehow. How can we do How can that? We do that? Well, I've got a shocker at home. Hit him with that, and I mm. doubt he'll be able to hold anything for a while. And we can we cuff can him cuff after that. that. I'll show you how to do it, actually. I'll let each one of you have a pair just in case. And someone's talking about BDSM, and she's got a shocker. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to finished? bring one for me. I don't think I'd be able to use them. Don't worry about it. They were designed with flyers in mind, so it's easy to cuff someone if you know how. Well, if you say so. Okay, we've got a shocker and some handcuffs, but that isn't much of a plan. What are we going to do? Wait for Reza to arrive, then I'll try to cuff him at once? Maybe you should go alone. Yeah, I'm sure Faria called us here only to confront Reza alone in the end. What are you talking about? Well, if you want to get him with the shocker, your best chance is to surprise him after you've gained his trust. You may think it's safer if we're all there because we outnumber him, but in reality this will likely provoke an aggressive reaction the instant he sees us all. I agree. You may not be able to talk him down, but in the end you only need to get close enough to hit him with the shocker. I think he's frightened, feeling like an alien in this world. Maybe that's how he could become a killer, by seeing us as something foreign or lesser. I've tried doing that before. With one of you staying and hiding until things about to go wrong, that usually didn't work out as well as it sh should have. Because your approach with him was wrong. You tried to talk him down or distract him while help arrived. What should I do then? Go there before Reza arrives and act like you were going to steal the generator yourself. Carry it together, and as soon as you're outside, surprise him with the shocker and cuff him. Meanwhile, all of us will be hiding in the area and watch you to ensure nothing goes wrong. That sounds pretty good. How did you come up with it? I read something similar in a book once. I see. Wasn't, Wasn't there in one, one of the Sheridan book? books? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. No comment. <laughs> Any other opinions about this plan? I couldn't think of anything better if I tried. Do you think you can really pull it off, Faria? I'll have to. We better get ready then. I'll have to fetch the cuffs from the department and Anna should get her shocker. I also have to make a phone call before I go. A phone call? Yeah, to tell Sebastian to not come in for his shift today. Hell yeah! We're doing this! While we waited for Bryce and Anna to return, Laura, Dean, and Remy stayed in my apartment and made lunch for everyone. <laughs> After we were all not reunited, Bryce showed us how to use the disposable plastic handcuffs he bought. Oh, wait, wait, it's the zip ties. As they were designed to even constrain an earth dragon like Bryce, they were nigh impossible to tear. And then you just pull here until they're tight enough and they won't be able to pull his wrists out. Got it. Yeah, it's a zip tie. <laughs> Does anyone need help? How about you two? No, I got it. You were right, it's pretty easy if you know how. Alright, we got some time before we're leaving. Guess we can Guess just sit around and wait. Eight. The calm before the storm. By the way, how's that investigation about me coming along, Bryce? That's not something we should talk about right now. Besides, I've been busy with the whole Reza thing, so... Of course you can't tell me anything. I suppose I won't know when your people will suddenly decide to take me in. It's not, hey, it's not my fault. You violated conditions of your suspended sentence. I'm just following protocol. I better get parted for doing this or else. Or else what? Or else I might well go through the portal myself. I'd just end up getting arrested here, just saying. 
If you don't want us to hear, maybe you should go right now. Hey, I'm all up for all. I'm all for helping Faria. I just want to make sure I'm covered as well. If what I read about her is true, then maybe she shouldn't get pardoned. Don't believe everything you read in those tabloids. I can confirm. They don't know anything. anything. You don't know the whole story either. Does that mean you lied under oath? Maybe I should reconsider this pardon thing. See, that's what I mean. She only cares about herself. My research has saved thousands of lives, if not millions. What did you ever do for the community? I volunteered at the orphanage, and what's more, I do more than, ju than I do that just to help them, not for my own gain. Why does she have to be the only one who gets to something out of this? Well, all of us will probably get a medal. This isn't really the kind of discussion we should ha be having right now. Anna, if you lied under oath, then that's something I can't just forget. What are you going to do about it? I'll make you a deal. You tell all of us right now what really happened back then, and you have my support when it comes to being pardoned for helping Faria stop Reza. How does that sound? We don't even need her help. She can just leave as far as I'm concerned. If I'm going, I'll take my shocker with me. Don't do that. I want to know what happened. You'd rather let her know, let, know and let her walk? She's already been investigated. She's already been investigated. Let the wheels of justice do their work. All of a sudden, Nadine's just being a bit of a bitch. Yeah. She may walk anyway. This infraction was so tiny that she may put a spin on it that makes it her look like the victim, just like last time. She tells us what really happened, and something that not something we'll always know about her, and we can be sure she won't do anything like it again. So now you're planning to resort to blackmail? You know what? Do whatever the heck you want. I don't care. Just make up your damn minds. I want to know. Me too. Lorem, Nadine. I don't like this. Alright, let's hear it. The majority has spoken. It all start it all started when I decided to look for new angles to tackle cancer. Since I occasionally work with the police, I got a phone call that they received a victim of some sort of accident. As the victim had no family or relatives, there was no one who could object to her body being used for such research, for research purposes. Usually, this wouldn't be anything special, but she wasn't just your usual victim. She was pregnant. <laughs> <sighs> Fucking knew it! And Remy's gonna be here to hear this. Uh-huh. And, and she saved. She ended up saving the child, and the child is Emily. But then, why would Emily have uh, the stripes on her back and have? Huh? I don't know. Well, we don't know what Amelia looks like. She was a red, the crimson dragon. For me, this opened up a lot of possibilities. Usually, the council wouldn't allow fertilized eggs to be used for research, but here we are talking about a new fertilized egg cells that hadn't. Even formed an eggshell. The reason yet. for the pattern is because she put her own cells into Emily. They would have perished quickly if I hadn't noticed she was technically pregnant. I submitted my forms to research and started my work. Since the material was very sensitive, there wasn't any time to wait for approval as it would have put the whole experiment at risk. Either way, I was sure the paperwork would go through, so I had other things to worry about than what some busybodies would think about my work. My approach was to tinker with the fertilized egg cell's DNA in order to create a living organism whose immune system would be strong enough to combat cancer all on its own. Once it hatched, I could make a few transplants and a new way to fight cancer would be born. In order to ensure compatibility with myself, I spliced some of my own DNA enough that it would be considered a member of my own species rather than the parents. I rest my case. <laughs> uh huh. The result of my experiment was incubated in an artificial eggshell. Then it was just a matter of time before it grew up and we could see the procedure was a success. For some reason or another, however, my proposal became a public matter. Proposals like mine that needed council's approval could, could be seen 
by anyone and were open to discourse, but usually people didn't care about them unless they had some experience in the field. Not, not so in my case. Once the media got a hold of it, rumors ran amok about what I was going to do. People fixated on small details and exaggerated the procedures outlined on the experiment. Self-appointed do-gooders who thrive on outrage made, a, made a smear campaign against me, and due to all the ensuing controversy, my proposal was ultimately rejected. It was already a shame that an experiment like mine, one that could help countless patients both current and future, could be shut down like this. But there was more. Some people were watching me, and they knew what I was doing with something with my lab. A group of council-approved scientists were going to come to my lab to discuss alternative strategies for what I was trying to do, but I knew it was partly a setup in order to check that everything in my lab was legitimate. By this point, the egg was already substantially developed. Knowing of their visit, that my experiment was now legal, I had to get rid of it somehow. I would have smashed it if I could, but the fetus inside was already too big to make it vanish easily. In the end, I decided to leave it on someone's doorstep, disguised as an egg left by unwanting parents. That whole affair got the police department in a lot of trouble, too, because it was us who gave you the material. Don't you have a single shred of decency within you? Now, let's not have any arguments here. I could have done much worse than leaving it on someone's doorstep. Besides, I don't expect any goodwill from me if you never show any, either. Hey, we're on your side during that whole thing, remember? Yes, but only because I saved your ass more times than I can count. No one, not a single person, has ever been nice to me just for the heck of it, except for Faria. Leaving an egg on someone's doorstep is such a horrible thing to do. Like, you would have done anything differently in my position. I would have owned up to my mistake because I know how these children end up. How they have to grow up if they don't get adopted within a few years, doomed to be nobody's children. You spliced your own DNA in, so you're basically its mother, yet you didn't hesitate to throw your child away when it became an inconvenience for you. Actually, it's more of a clone than a child. Did it even have a name, or was it just a product for you? A failed experiment? She did have a name. I even scribbled it on, the, on her egg before I left it. Wait a minute. It would have been around the same time, but... No, it can't be. What was the name? Why do you even care? They probably found her, and so she went to a nice family and lived ever, effly ever after. End of story. What was her name? Well, if you really want to know, it was Emily. I know her. She's been living in the orphanage all her life, while you went on with yours without a care in the world. Why even that name? After her mother, I guess. Now that you mention it, I think the victim's name was a bit different. Um, um, Amelia, that was it. Froze to death during a winter night, if I recall correctly. What? Remy, I never told you this, but shortly after she died, Amelia, f shortly, shortly before, before she died, she Amelia found out that she was pregnant. That means you... Where is she? Don't worry, Remy. She's being taken care of in the orphanage. We can go there once this is over. No, I want to go there right now. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Yeah, if you're gonna meet her, it'll take some preparation. You shouldn't see her when you're like this. Besides, we should be focusing on Reza right now. Agreed. You're right. This is more important. That means Remy go actually anyway. has a legitimate child. Uh, it, it's amazing because Amelie is what really ties everyone together. Except for Lorem. <laughs> yeah. Lorem is just sort of along for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's do this. So much talking! And there's still so much Soon more we arrived at our destination. Go. Everyone chose their hiding places. It wasn't easy, especially since we didn't know where Reza would come from. But with a bit of scouting help from Adine, they all found suitable places eventually. 
I went inside trying to remember the room the generator was in. Luckily, I had plenty of time. When I found it, I packed it up in a cardboard box that was lying around, just as Reza had done so many times before. I then waited, knowing of various conversations we had in other timelines when we met here. I could think about what I was going to say and what his likely responses would be. I found it interesting that this time, I could be the one who was here first. After a while, I heard footsteps outside. As if on cue, I took the box with the generator and opened the door. Reza, you're here? You don't know how glad I am to see you. I've wanted to talk with you for so long. Where have you been all this time? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. But talking can wait. Now that you're here, we've got everything. Come, help me with this. Let's get out of here. Reza walked up to me and grabbed the other side of the box. Slowly, we made our way through the building. I can't wait to get out of this place. It gives me the creeps. How so? Ever since I arrived here, a lot of weird things have happened. I don't like it. What are you talking about? Something strange is going on in this world. When I close my eyes, I see things that never happened. Things that later turned out to be true. Do you know what I'm talking about? So you do. How is that possible? I don't know, Reza. I had my own reasons for coming here today. I knew now would be the best time to take the generator and leave through the portal. What about you? They aren't looking for you too, are they? No. They believe I'm on their side. And what are you doing here? I had a feeling you'd be here. Figure it out just like you did. We can't wait for them to build us new generators, considering they took the PDAs and generators back from you. It's more than fair we take this as payment and be done with it. Wait a minute. What is it? Something's not right here. Suddenly he let go of the box, making me put it down. He took a few steps back before he grabbed his gun and pointed it at me. Reza, what's wrong with you? How could you even know the time I was going to be here? Because of the fireworks, we both know it would give us the perfect cover to do this now. No, that's not it. We've both been here before. I remember us carrying out the box together. And that time, you killed me with my own gun. Reza, what are you talking about? It's all coming back to me now. There's not a single time when you were actually wanting to help me. That girl with the mask, where is she? Reza turned around <laughs> just in time to see- <laughs> Where is she? He just gets fucking jumped! Bam. Reza anus. turned around just in time to see the administrator tackle him to the ground. I ran towards them, but in their scuffle, a few gunshots unloaded. The telltale hiss of the generator sounded through the hallway. I turned around and ran toward the exit while both Reza and the administrator scrambled to their feet and followed me. When we were all outside, I was swept off my feet as the generator exploded. Recovering from the fall, I looked up only to see Reza running toward the portal. Suddenly, Adin swooped in from behind and collided with Reza. He stumbled and fell to the ground while Adin regained her balance and ascended, attempting to circle to face him again. <laughs> Reza stood up and raised his gun at her when Maverick suddenly pounced out of nowhere and pinned him to the ground. Bryce was running towards them when, uh, at, at, when Maverick looked at Reza, growling. Don't kill him, Maverick! And why not? After what he's done to you, you're not letting him off the hook that easily, are you? Hi. Let me cuff him. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. When I arrived, Reza was already secured and ready to go. He spotted me, his face contorting with anger. You! How could you do this to me? To everyone! You have no idea what I ha had to do to get here! To get this close to bringing the generator home! And to our people! If you had only helped me instead of them, you could have we could have done it too! Where were you when that bastard of a dragon bit me? When I couldn't do anything but lie around in pain the whole day with a festering wound, huh? Or when I waited for you at the portal a week ago, ready to leave with the parts I stole to repair it? When I sh shot my gun a few times, hoping you'd hear it so we would escape together. I risked everything when I waited for you. Maverick nearly got me that time too. I could have left without you if I wanted. I had everything I needed, but I didn't want to just leave you behind. Should I shut him up? No, let him talk. You said we would do anything. That together we could save humanity. All those teleportations messing with our heads. Don't you remember our plan? I never forgot about our plan, Reza. I just wanted the dragons to be a part of it, too. What are you gonna do now, huh? You'll see. Humanity's gonna be fine. So are you. Take him away, Bryce. I just wanna know one thing. Who really sabotaged the portal? Maverick! That was me. I knew it was Reza who was stealing the generator, so the bet least I could do to prevent him from sending them through to Manny and escaping through the portal as long as it didn't run. 
He could never completely get away with us. From us. Say it! You were right about nearly everything, Maverick. Just not about Faria. Still, it took an extraordinary amount of bravery and courage to do what you did. Who knows how this all would have turned out if it wasn't for you. It feels so strange to me now. But it's just like I had to f just, but like I just had to follow Reza. That even I knew where to go and where to where I would find him. Followed my intuition, but the longer I kept pursuing him, the more I thought I was going crazy, and that it might mean my end if I decided to go down this path. Maybe that wasn't you, just your intuition. Come on, do you want to help me show Reza his new cell? It would be my pleasure. Yeah, because it met you. You met your end every single other time we've come to the end and ending, <laughs> except for now. Or. Uh, a Dean's good ending. Maverick survived. Barely. Just as they went off with Reza, I saw Remy and Lorem approaching. Whoop. Izumi was leaning against Remy while they walked up to us together, her overalls bearing a large red stain in the center. She needs help fast. I tried to give her some first aid, but I don't think it did much. Based on those wounds, I'm not sure if anyone can help her now. She's right. I won't be around much longer. And there are still things I need to tell and show you for here. Maybe I could carry you. No, we have to go alone. Alright, can you all wait for me here? Sure. Please, just don't start arguing again. There would be no point now that we've stopped Reza. It's all good. She actually managed she, to convince Maverick. She actually Maverick managed to convince to Maverick not to, to not kill him. Ex-boyfriend, and he still listens to me. Isn't that funny? I could tell you about Emily while we wait. That would be lovely. But you already know about Emily. A little bit. Oh, this is new. Izumi led the way as we walked through the unfamiliar territory. Maybe I should start by telling you that I haven't been exactly truthful with you. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's fine. Still, now that we're here, I think I should tell you everything. When I was accidentally sent back in time, I wasn't alone. What are you talking about? Did you really think a single person could have accomplished everything I told you about and single-handedly figure out time travel along the way? We were an elite team, sent to break new ground. There were four of us. Heinz Foreman, geneticist, and project lead. Old as shit. Sybil, Sybil Thomas, Thomas, behavior specialist. The black guy. Franc <laughs> Francois <laughs> military advisor. And lastly me, Otomo Izumi, engineer and maintenance crew. No, it's Captain Jack. <laughs> this is... You can't... God, you these can't fu die. More fucking voices for me to have to do? This is the kind of job that is so top secret that I wouldn't be surprised if we were all killed after we hand over the data. It's a good thing we're not expendable, huh? You think you're sending us into the middle of nowhere without seeing us in expendable? People, please. First of all, you were briefed about this, so you should already know what our duties will be. I am sure all of you are well qualified to perform as expected, but let's get to what this project is really about. Does anyone want to make a guess? Since I'm he- Oh, that's the black guy again. <laughs> Since I'm here, it can only mean something with military applications. Good guess. Miss Thomas, does it have anything to do with PT? Or chance? Not quite. How about you, Miss Otomo? I have no idea. Just get to the point, please. Let me sum this up with one sentence. Intelligent, trainable bioweapons as low-cost alternative to mechanized weaponry in developing countries. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, 
this conundrum we find ourselves in might actually work out in our favor. Since we're outside of any jurisdiction now, that means we can do whatever we want during this little project of ours. Just think of the opportunities. You intend to utilize human DNA in this project, don't you? I thought they would I thought they would do that anyway and pay off whichever country we would find ourselves in. Yes, but now we won't even have to do that anymore. It will take me a while to repair all the damage and reestablish communications with the company. Until then, we're kind of stuck here. Who says we need to wait until then? I don't know. I don't think they'd like it if we just went ahead with the project before they even know what happened to us. Sometimes it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. That's how you end up in jail. What else are we supposed to do while we are here? If worst comes to worst, we can just destroy the results. Heck, if this works out, we're the only ones who have a portal into the past like this. It could be only the first of many incredible opportunities. Think about all the animals we could use, the raw materials and plants, even the atmosphere. I can already smell all the rare gases here that we could harvest. I think that's just the ventilation system being wonky. I haven't had time to adjust it yet. You're only thinking about the company, but what about us? Already think about mutiny? I think that would be a bad idea. I thought our salary already contained an eternal loyalty and silence bonus. That's the thing with greed. People always crave more, regardless of how much they already have. All this discussion is pointless. I'm the team lead and I decide we do this. As long as you take responsibility if there are any troubles. I know what the company wants, and I say this will make them more than just happy. In a few years, you will thank me for it. Trust me. If you say so. If we're going to make bioweapons, what animals should, would we have based them on if we didn't end up here? The great thing is that we don't have to choose. We already have technology that does all the work for us. We just need to provide the samples, and based on our criteria, we get a customized genome that fits our purpose as best as possible. And you want to give them human intelligence? Why wouldn't we give them as much intelligence as we can? If they can think too advanced, too abstract, don't you think they might start to have independent thoughts? How are you going to control them? That's what Miss Thomas and Mr. Bordelon are here for. With the right training, it shouldn't be an issue. Besides, if you know what most human soldiers... You know that human, most human soldiers are obedient, right? I suppose so. How do we know this is going to work with dinosaur DNA as well? We will find out soon enough. Should we? That is not a question we ask at this company. You should know that by now. I like how they're just all standing in an elevator while doing this, I guess. Bam. <laughs> Bam. I'm just imagining like like some sweet ass elevator music in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Have you never seen Jurassic Park? If you want to see Jurassic Park, you only need to open that door. You will soon find that all your concerns are unfounded, and I'll show you why. But first, let me talk about abilities. Now that we have a whole new world of potential samples, we should be able to find even better alternatives to what we have been planning. What abilities would those be? Flight, armor, fire, to name a few. All at once? That sounds an awful lot like dragons. Dragons are scary, aren't they? This could even be a psychological component. To be fair, getting all of those into the same species could be complicated. You think you can do something nature couldn't? That's why we're here. What animal is the fire ability based on? The Bombardier Beetle. 
We're going to make the mechanism safer and easier to control, though. This one I actually do know about. Yeah. All right, so we're going to combine animal strengths with higher cognitive abilities. But how are you going to prevent others from stealing the genome? Backyard breeders could be a problem. A very good question. There are a number of safeguards we are going to introduce so to prevent any unauthorized copying of our product. Firstly, there's the genome itself. Raising these creatures from infancy to a point where they can become use usable for their purpose will take some time. Since we're going to do this ourselves, we have a unique blend of hormones to make them reach this stage fairly quickly. Making them grow up naturally is something that will take so much time and resources as to become unviable by anyone who would want to go that route. With us, that can be com they can be combat run ready in months instead of years. Secondly, all creatures will be equipped with a brain implant. Not only will this give them a variety of advantages, but it's another safeguard against copying as well. Without the chip, they will either become uncontrollable or die. So, even if the genome is stolen, they won't be worth anything without the chip. That's genius. I know. Couldn't someone just hack or reverse engineer the chip and manufacture it themselves? I doubt it. They're intended to be sold in low technology areas. Even if they can reverse engineer the chip, they don't have the facilities to mass manufacture them. Otherwise, they'd just be using combat robots like everyone else. You want to modify their behavior with technology? Being dependent on a chip sounds dangerous. What if it fails? Don't worry about that. Lastly, there's the training. Training every, any living being, no matter if human or not, takes time and money. Not only do we have an automated training program, but we can also use the implant to accelerate this process. What about direct transference of knowledge into the creature's brains via the implant? That technology is still in its infancy. If we want to get this product out into the market as soon as possible, we'll need a solution that works right now. Fair enough. It will give the user full control as well. The creatures will be able to learn from experience, but undesirable mil memories will can be wiped easily. Sounds like you have it all figured out already. The company has been working on this project for a long time. Now it's up to us to make it reach its natural conclusion. And that what would that be? Our product is the creature, the chip, and the training. All in one complete package. Take away just one of these three things and the product won't work as intended. We deliver them ready to be used in combat from the moment they arrive at the customer's doorstep. I still think we should wait before you rush into using animals that we hardly know anything about. Your opinion has been noted, Miss Otomo, but it won't carry much weight. Despite my objections, the experiments under Heinz Foreman went full steam ahead. Using the genetic material of many prehistoric reptiles, a variety of species were designed. We started our tests with the one that enjoyed the most combat-related improvements, measuring their viability and the effects of our safeguards. Soon, the first proto-dragons were born. One was to be raised as naturally as possible, another was going to receive the hormones for accelerated growth, while the third was to be trained via an automated learning program. The last was to receive all of the safeguards at once. They were all identical clones. Yep. Control. Caring for them was a task that ultimately fell on all of us, in addition to our usual duties. For now, the artificial domestication process on the genome made sure they would be controllable and obedient, even without the implant or training. We were already being recognized as pack mates and parents by them. While I knew about the added intelligence, I soon had to realize just how far they had gone. It was when the first of them started talking. At that moment, I knew they would never be free. 
never be happy. They would only ever live a life of servitude or be used as weapons. They were given sapience, only to face a future of enslavement. I knew that the company would expertly maneuver around legal system to make it possible. As I had worked my way up the ranks within the company, I had become increasingly delusioned by the many despicable acts and projects I witnessed. But now I was at a breaking point, ready to blow the whistle on everything I knew about them. While the experiments continued, they relied on me to repair the portal and return to our time, but I could only buy so much time while I figured out how to proceed. I knew that as soon as contact was re-established, I wouldn't be able to stop the project anymore. It was then that I realized I had to do something. You'd think they wouldn't need to send someone to take care of this anymore. Should be all automated by now. True, we have a robot that can perform any kind of surgery, so they don't need to send a doctor anymore. Why not have a robot that can take care of another robot? Because I'd be the one to create that robot, and if I did, I'd be out of a job. By the way, I think the heater in my room is broken. Would you mind taking a look at it later? I could think of a few ways to turn up the heat. <laughs> Tempting offer that I unfortunately will have to decline, Mr. Bordelon. I hate these early meetings. Anyone else want a cup of coffee? Is it Tomo, perhaps? You know I don't drink coffee. Three cups, then. Just as usual. I don't know why they even gave us four. Here you go. Why even coffee? It's not as if we can't couldn't just take a pill to get the same effect. Ah, but then you wouldn't get this lovely taste, Miss Thomas. Can we just get this over with? Of course, of course. Who wants to present their results first? No one? Alright, I suppose it will have to be me. Again. You know what? You should all be glad that everything is recorded and transcribed automatically now. In my days, we actually had to write these reports ourselves. Hail to our machine overlords. Can we just get this over with? Of course, Mr. Bordelon. We... <laughs> Click. Hello? Ah. I think we lost someone. Ah! Hang on. We'll be, uh... Hang on, we're gonna fix this. <laughs> and what do you know, my internet went out. Hoorah. Gotta get that all back up and running. Shouldn't take long, boys and girls. We just lost connection. I'm back. Oh, hey, welcome back. I didn't say anything. Pull up the feet again. Suddenly, Heinz started coughing. When his fit didn't stop after a few seconds, all of us stood up and... Francois went over to him. Heinz keeled over, his eyes opening widely to, into an unfocused stare. He stopped moving before a bit of foam started appearing at his mouth. He needs his injector. There should be one in the drawer over there. Quickly, I went over to the drawer, grabbed something, and ran up to Sybil. That's not it, you stupid... 
Before I could fin before she could finish her sentence, I drove the scalpel into her neck. She collapsed immediately as bl blood gushed out of the wound, staining the floor red. She screamed, and Francois turned to see me still holding the scalpel while the bleeding Sybil lay on the ground next to me. I attempted to stab him, but he grabbed my arm and wrestled the scalpel away from me, which fell to the floor with an audible clang. He then wrapped his hands around my neck, starting to choke me. I fell over backwards, and he followed, his hands never leaving my neck in the process. He was now kneeling above me, and I found myself becoming weaker by the second. I made peace with the idea I was going to die. I didn't know what would happen afterwards, to the dragons, to earth, to everyone. But at least I could say I tried. I... When I came to, it was from feeling something dripping onto my face before Francoise was dragged away from me. Slowly, my vision returned. I looked up to see one of the dragons approach me before it started to lick my face with its blood-stained muzzle. That's an interesting one. That's a very beautiful dragon. The other design species were made after making some adjustments to the learning program. I, it taught them what I wanted them to know. I founded the first village, and they grew up quickly, knowing only me as their leader. By the time I left, they didn't even need me anymore. They had become completely self-sufficient. What? So in the end, you gave them even more than your life. More than life, you gave them freedom. She sat on the ground, panting heavily. There should yeah. be a shovel over there. Take it and dig. I did as she asked and began digging a hole in the area she in indirected. I wondered what would await me when the shovel hit something hard and I dug around it, unearthly, unearthing a vaguely round shape. More shapes followed as I continued. I eventually realized I was looking at a body. I lifted it out of the shallow grave before turning it over. It was me. Why? How? You have to understand, there was no other way. Each time you traveled back in time, I had to kill you. Having multiple instances of you would have been troublesome. We only needed one of you, one to go through the same scenario over and over again so we could learn what to do differently. So this is your graveyard then, full of other instances of me. Not just you, there are also others and myself. Others? Yes, in some timelines they sent someone else instead of you. She was not a nice person. Why did they send someone else? They told me I was their best candidate as I was going to offer my own PDA for the trade. Because in those timelines, you died before you ever had a chance to arrive here. Murdered for that very PDA you gave to the dragons. How many are there? How many did you bury? How many times have we done this now? I lost track a long time ago. How I wish I could forget it all. You only did what you had to. Freya, do you remember anything about the first time you came here? Let me think. You mean when I confronted Reza alone with that explosive I made from a generator? Then you don't. You only remember the newer timelines. I think it's better this way. I've killed you so many times, and sometimes you did the same to me, or rather, different me. You don't know what it was like when I still had to try and figure everything out. You only remember the timelines I have sufficiently tampered with. What are you trying to tell me? The first few times I was just watching you. I could see your intentions were pure and that you were filled with determination, but without my help you always failed. Everything that happened, from all the murders to the conclusion in the lab, it was all necessary to arrive here. Also, I needed to show you what kind of person Reza was. You wouldn't have believed me otherwise. I could have stopped him earlier and saved all those he killed? I don't know. If I died before I could reveal myself to you, circumstances could have been unfixable. How many times do you think we tried before we even had the remote possibility to succeed? I know what you did. I've done it too, remember? If you didn't step up to take the position back, then we probably still would have to figure out a few things. Sometimes I didn't quite know myself why I had to do the things you told me to. 
we didn't lure Maverick to the portal during my first day. The confrontation that sets off this whole chain of events wouldn't even happen. Your meeting with Reza had to be interrupted, otherwise he would have told you about his plan that night. And from the ensuing talk, there would have only been two options. Either we, you would have joined him and saved humanity while leaving this world to die, or you would have opposed him, in which case he did not hesitate to shoot you then and there. We had to do a lot of things to make this happen, didn't we? And all those other timelines, just to succeed in this one. The others might have failed, but still we learned something from every little mistake we made. It's how we could arrive here. What will you do now? With the generator gone, we won't be able to stop the comet. Maybe we don't need to. What are you talking about? Back home, there are plenty of empty buildings. If the dragons took their generators and technology with them, we could revive all the infrastructure, the hospitals, schools, everything. They can make humanity an offer they won't be able to refuse. You want to relocate them? Do you even have any idea how many dragons live here? Sure, they may have never settled on another continent, but we're still talking about millions here. Even if they won't accept them, they will have safe passage into to a new set up a new city. I don't think we'll it will have to come to that though. We have plenty of dead infrastructure and room to fill. It could be the very first city of its kind, with dragons and humans living together. Besides, if we can't stop the comet, this is about as good as it's going to get. I know you won't settle for anything less. If this is the only way, then I won't object to this outcome. I thought of humans and dragons living together it is one that I think bears a lot of potential. Maybe from the ashes of both civilizations, something new and greater can be created. You don't realize the weight that's been on my shoulders from all the things I had to do to make this work. Now that we're here, I don't think I can continue this experience with these memories in my mind. Now that we've saved them, I can finally stop. Maybe I have to apologize. You were right to want to save humanity too. When both me and Reza only cared for one civilization, you never settled for one. You wanted to save everyone. I guess I was so blinded by wanting to preserve my creation that I refused to see anything else. I'm glad you saw this through to the end. You never stopped believing. If it wasn't for you, I could have never done this. And now it's on you to make it work. A city of dragons and humans. I'll try to do my best. I believe you will. Then I can die happy, knowing that they will be safe and can look to a brighter future. No, you can't just die now. How am I supposed to do this without you? Don't be sad for me. I wouldn't have it any other way. Good night, Izumi. Besides, I'm sure you'll do a fine job. How can you be sure I will? Because if you don't, I will hold you responsible for what happens to them, through time and space if necessary. How can you make jokes at a time like this? I've, you have only seen what I had to do, not what I wanted to. If we meet in a different time, a different place, things could have been very different. I have killed you so many times and put you through so much anguish to make this happen. I only long for your forgiveness and understanding, that you can look at what we have achieved now and tell me that it was worth it. It was. Thank you. She closed her eyes as a single tear ran down her face. I moved to wipe her from here, and I could already feel the warmth draining from Izumi's body. She was dead. After being told of the comet and realizing that any of their attempts to stop or redirect it would fail without the lab's generator, the Dragon's Council agreed with my course of action, as did humanity. While the repopulation of our city turned out very differently than humanity had initially hoped, all concerns were not against the possibility of the vast amounts of technology and generators that the Dragon would bring to revive it. Soon, the initiative to relocate the dragons through the portal was in full force, and I, still acting as an ambassador, helped them as much as I could to make it go as smoothly as possible. After a few weeks, we had done it, and as the last of the dragons from even the furthest regions had arrived at the other side, the time for me had come to walk through the portal for the very last time. I looked back to their village and saw all the abandoned buildings doomed to be destroyed when the comet would hit soon. 
As I walked up to the platform and waited for the portal to do its starting routine, I thought about what would happen now and what would come of this collaboration between humans and dragons. I was sure that there was a lot of work to be done, especially if I considered the state of the rest of the world. But maybe our city could be a bastion of Earth. Not as the last one remaining, but rather as the first of its kind. And from it, maybe we'd be able to grow and spread our influence. Maybe, together, we can rebuild. So, what do you think? God damn, that's one hell of an ending. Is there Sorry. anything at the end? It's like an information dump. Like, yeah. Like, when I first saw Amelie, I thought there was going to be something special about her just because of how awkward she looked at first. Yeah, she's all like a, a blotchy cow. Well, that's also the... So... Improper genes. Or you could say Remy's and Anna's skin coloring. Or or you should, or you could say she has um. Oh, what was it called? Michael what Jackson had it. What the pigmentation disorder? Yeah, or or it's uh, yes. pigmentation and. It basically, it turns someone that has pigment in their skin to having none. Just of Emra just makes it look like she's a neat arena. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here on this bench. I don't care if it's awkward. Boys and girls, it's been one hell of a ride. It's been one hell of a twist in all of our emotions. All of these tries. All of these failures. And any success that came from them. But this is it. This is the end. This has been Angels with Scaly Wings. I am Faria, and I'm joined here with Hikari and Lucian. Yo. Is there anything extra at the end? If I remember correctly, no. None of this could have been possible without them, or without you, the viewers. Thank you. This game is out on Steam. Ten dollars. Definitely worth getting picked up. Experience the emotions firsthand while you make the choices. Wonder if. The torch has been passed. Reza at the end of all this. Is he just in a prison cell, or is he just not agreeing with this idea? Uh, I'd say he's, he's actually been kicked out of the city. Now nah, we just left him behind if, to deal with they, the comment. Uh, if they do tell him, yeah, if they do tell him that he's killed you know, <laughs> two dragons, and then they probably say, hey, you know what, you're not going to be part of our utopia. But, the torch is now being passed. It's not my job to come back through this Ooh, anymore. Right. <laughs> he looks so happy. Angels with scaly wings. I don't think you're gonna want to do any more of the bad endings, are you? This is where it ends. This is where the series is over. Yeah. Yay! Oh, look, it's all the items referring to all the paths. I bid you all adieu. Thank you for playing. Oh. 
Does that mean that's it? That's all there is to see? Well, who knows? Either way, it might be a good idea to keep your save file. You know, just to be sure. Maybe it'll come in handy in the future. Hey, it's daytime. Yay. I'll see you guys in the next series. This has been Angels with Scaly Wings. I bid you adieu, and I hope you click that like button or give this video a thumbs up, whichever you wish to prefer it as. Click that subscribe button to see what's going to be coming out next. I have to take my leave now. I leave the rest to you.